Hey guys, it's Michael from Kaka Chemistry. In this video, we'll be going over boiling point elevation, what it is, what equations associated with it, and several problems about how to use the equation. First of all, boiling point elevation, the concept is if you have a solvent, in this case, let's, let's pretend we have water, which has a boiling point of 100 degrees Celsius, and then we add some solid to it, that's going to create a new solution with a boiling point that's higher than the original boiling point. So essentially, by adding a solute into the solvent, you're elevating the boiling point. And just the more solute that you add, the higher the boiling point of the final solution will be compared to the original solvent. The equation that you use for boiling point elevation is written here. Change in the temperature of the boiling point which is typically in degrees Celsius, is equal to I, which is the Van Hoff factor, which is how many species the solute will break up into. Don't worry, this will make a little bit more sense when we look at the example problem. Multiply by Kb, which is the boiling point elevation constant, which is going to be different for every solvent. And multiply by the molality, lowercase m, which is equal to the moles of the solute divided by the kilograms of the solvent. All right, let's take a look at how we can use this equation in the problem. So in this problem, it's, it's asking us, what is the new boiling point of solution that's prepared by dissolving 96 grams of sodium chloride to 383 milliliters of water? And it tells us the boiling point constant for water is as such. So our goal is to solve for the new boiling, the new boiling point. Uh, to do that, we have to solve for the change in the temperature of the boiling point. So let's start with this equation and take a look at what we have. So we're just, this is our goal, we're, trying, we're solving for that. I is the Van Hoff factor. It's how many species the solute will break up into. Our solute here is sodium chloride, and sodium chloride is formula is NaCl. This is an ionic compound. When this is dissolved in water, it breaks up into Na plus and Cl minus. So you can see it breaks up into two species. So that means that the Van Hoff factors can be two. The Kb, this is the boiling point elevation constant, that's given to us as well, and that's 0.52 degrees Celsius per mole out. So I'm going to input that as 0.52 degrees Celsius divided by molal. Then we have to calculate the molality. And molality is equal to the moles of the solute divided by the kilograms of the solvent. So our solute is the 96 grams of sodium chloride. And then our solvent is the 383 grams of water. Let's start by converting the sodium chloride, the 96 grams of sodium chloride into moles. So we'll start with the given 96.0 grams of sodium chloride, and then to convert it to moles, we're going to multiply by one mole of sodium chloride over the molar mass. So we can take a look at a periodic table to get the molar mass of sodium chloride, and that just involves adding the, the molar mass of sodium plus molar mass of chloride, and that comes out to be roughly around 50, let's see, 58.45 grams of NaCl. And then the grams of NaCl will cancel out, giving us moles of sodium chloride. So we'll just do 96 divided by 58.45. And that gives us 1.64 moles of the NaCl. So now that we have the moles for the, for the molality part, let's figure out the kilograms. We got to get the kilograms of solvent. So we have 383 milliliters of water. And then we got to get to this into kilograms. So to do that, we first have to convert the milliliters into grams and into kilograms. And this is where we use the density. The problem doesn't tell you this, but the density of water is one gram per milliliter. So every one milliliter of water weighs one gram. So we can put one milliliter, one gram on top and one milliliter on the bottom. So that means that we have 383 grams of water. And then we want to get to until kilograms. For every 1,000 grams, there are one kilogram. So essentially, to get the kilograms, we just have to divide by 1,000. So this is going to be 383 divided by 1,000, and then get, that gives us 0.383 kilograms. Now that we have the moles and we have the kilograms, we can calculate the molar, molality. So molality capital M, or sorry, lowercase m, is going to equal to the moles, 1.64 moles divided by the kilograms of solvent, 0.383 kilograms. Let's plug that in and see what we get. 1.64 divided by 0.383 and that gives you 4.29 mole out. And then that's what you're going to input right here. 4.29 mole out for an M. 
So now we have I, we have KB, and we have M. We can multiply these and we can figure out what's the increase in the boiling point. And then that gives you 4.46 degrees Celsius. Or if we're looking, worrying about sig figs, we should have two sig figs, so this should just be 4.5 degrees Celsius. That means that the temp, the boiling point has increased by 4.5 degrees Celsius upon dissolving the 96 grams of the solute into the solvent. So that means our final, our final boiling point is going to equal the original boiling point of water, which is 100 degrees Celsius, and we're going to add the change, 4.5 degrees Celsius. So that means the, the new boiling point is going to be 100 and 4.5 degrees Celsius. All right, let's take a look at another problem. This next problem is asking us how many grams of fructose must be dissolved in 419 grams of benzene to raise the boiling point by 3.8 degrees Celsius. And then the problem also gives us the boiling point elevation constant for benzene. So once again, since this problem is asking us about elevating the boiling point, we should use this equation right here. And we already know the change in the temperature of the boiling point. It says that the, the boiling point was increased by 3.8 degrees Celsius. So we know this is going to be 3.8 degrees Celsius. I against the Van Hoff factor. Let's start by identifying which, the, which is the solute, what's being dissolved, and what's the solvent, what's doing the dissolving. We know that fructose is going to be our solute here because that's what's being dissolved. And then the benzene is our solvent. The I value depends on the solute. Fructose is a molecular compound because it just contains nonmetals only. So we know that since it's molecular, it's not going to break up into multiple species when it dissolves. It just stays intact. So that means the I value of the fructose is just going to be 1. Kb is the boiling point elevation constant. That's 2.67 degrees Celsius per molal. And then the molality, let's, uh, let's just leave that as our unknown for now and the sovereign molality. So to do this, we just do 3.8 divided by 2.67. Since we're just dividing both sides by 1 times 2.67. And then that gives us 1.42 molal. And remember, molal is equal to the moles of the, sol of the solute, which in this case is our fructose C6H12O5 divided by the kilograms of the solvent, which is the benzene. Then let's start substituting some numbers in. I'm just going to reco recopy this down here. We know that the grams of, of the solvent is 419, so we can divide that by 1,000 to get the kilograms, and that will be 0. 0.419 kilograms. And then we can solve for the moles of the fructose. So to do that, we could just cross multiply both sides. So 1.42 multiplied by 0. 0.419, and that gives you 0. 0.595 moles of the fructose. And so now that we have the moles, to get the grams, we just multiply it by the molar mass. And so we can just calculate the molar mass by adding the six carbons together, the 12 hydrogens together, and then the, the five oxygens together. This is to save some time, I'm just going to pull up the molar mass, and that is equal to 180.16 grams of fructose for every one mole of fructose. And when I was looking up the molar mass, I realized I made a mistake in copying it over here. It's actually supposed to be C6H12O6, not O5. So let's go back and just change this. This should be O6, um, this should be O6, and this should be O6. Then we just multiply the moles by the by the molar mass, and that will cancel out the moles and give us the number of grams, our final answer. And then that equals 107 grams of fructose. And that's our final answer. So there you have it. That's two examples of boiling point elevation constant calculation problems. If you want to learn how to ace chemistry, if you want to learn what's the best way to study for this class, if you want to learn some neat tricks and tips to take into your exam and do better on them, then you should head over to my website and get this free guide, uh, 12 Secrets to Ace in Chemistry. You can head over to www.conquerchemistry.com chemsecrets. I'm going to include a link in the description below. 
check it out. I think it's really going to help you and you're going to, you're going to like it until next time. Keep working hard and continue the good work.